select it, double click it, and that allows you to select the text. And this is a courtesy, C-O-U-R-T-E-S-Y colon NASA. And now when I preview this, planetary extension of the internet. But what we'd like to do is to make the space done. It automatically animates itself in. All I had to do was to add the type. Now you'd think if they could get a courtesy to look good, they'd be able to get lower thirds to look good. But here Apple just, just let us down. The lower thirds are a disaster. They don't match. They just, it's just, <sighs> I'm going to look for a lower third here. Clear this. I had text in the search box. You click the X in a circle. The text box is emptied. I'm looking for a lower third called middle. And we'll just enter it in here. I've gone through this enough and made notes. Let's look at that. Is that not just, it just hurts my eyes to look at. Double click it to load it up into the timeline at the position of the playhead. And now we're going to make changes. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it so it it ends just before the fade up and starts starts just after Dr. Surf comes on. Always put your playhead in the middle of the title so you can see what you're working on. And because this is title based, we need to pay attention to action safe and title safe. Go all the way up here, go down to, to the switch, go down to show title action safe zones. Look at this. They can't even get the title to fit inside title safe. This is just stupid. All right, here's how we fix this. Double click the title. Let's just, uh, let's see, set this to 100%. See this red box here? Click, hold, and drag it. It allows you to move around when you're zoomed into the picture. I'm going to grab this white circle, drag it up. Double click description, grab the white circle, drag it so the description sits right on the baseline. Now, let's open the inspector. When we have a title selected and we open the inspector, we have several tabs here. Title allows us to adjust the animation and the font of the title. Text allows us to make changes to the title. So this is the text settings. This is the animation settings. Just because it's easier to work with, I'm going to go to the text tab and type as title, mathematician. Okay, good. So I've entered that. Now we'll go back to... Double click the name, select it. I could either type it in the viewer or type it in the text box, Dr. Vint, sir, whoops, no period, C-E-R-F. Okay, good. Now let's, let's add some styling to this. Scroll farther down than the text window. I'm going to skip all this. That formatting is controlled from animation. It varies on titles. Sometimes it's done from the text tab. Sometimes it's done from the title tab. In this case, it's done from the title tab. Turn off the outline. Outline almost always makes your text look worse. Face. We're going to turn the face on. Click Show. Change the font color to something nice and cheerful, like a yellow. Leave all the rest of the settings alone. Click Hide. Drop Shadow. I don't know where Apple got its drop shadow settings. They're close, but they're certainly not good enough. Type the opacity to 90%. The blur should be 5. The distance should be 10. Let's click on that. 10. And the angle should be 315. Opacity 90. A blur of 5. A distance of 10. An angle of 3. Oh, let's make a blur of 2. Keep it sharper. There we go a distance of 10, an angle of 315. Click, and we will have something that looks good in just a second. We got one more thing to fix. Let's do the same thing with mathematician. With mathematician, again, I'm going to turn off the outline, drop shadow, and set the opacity to 90, hit the tab key, the blur is 2, the distance is 10, and the angle is 315. Okay, so now we're getting closer. Let's set this back to fit. And we're already starting to see that it's starting to look a little bit better, but the fonts are still really whacked. So we go fix that going to title. Gil Sands is a good face, but I'm a big fan of geometrics right now. I set this to geometric, set it to regular, and we'll set it to 100 point. I have no idea what these point sizes relate to, because the sizes they come up with are totally different than what 100 points should actually look like. 
but I just nod my head and say, okay, we move on. Set this also to geometric, but this time I'm going to set it to a bold geometric, and we'll set the point size to 72 point. Finally, double-click Dr. Surf, grab that circle, drag it down just a bit, tighten it up. And now if we set this to 100%, we get ourselves a nice, clean-looking key. And just double-check that the drop shadow is not turned off by mistake. Good, it's on, and we're good. So now watch what happens. Watch and how that role title that I fades have in. Another role Laboratory, we've been and then at working the end, it for the last out. six years or so on the design. That fade is controlled from the title tab up here. If you don't want it to fade in, uncheck build in. The fade is a half second fade, 15 frames at 30 frames a second. If you don't want it to fade out, say you're cutting off the title to another shot and you don't want it to fade, uncheck build out. This is where you're able to set your fonts and your colors. It's where you're able to set your sizes. And now we've got this so that it fades in and fades out. In another role that I the orange bar indicates that we've got to do rendering. We can either render the selection or render the entire piece. Well, if we render the entire piece, we go up to Modify, Render All, or if you just want to render a little bit of it, Modify, Render Selection. Keyboard shortcut is Control-R or Shift-Control-R. And now it's busy rendering, which I can never wait for. So I'm just going to click here and start playback. In another role that I have at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we've been working for the last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. But what we'd like to do is to make this exploration effort supported in the same way as we've been able to support communications terrestrially. Because if we do that, if there are existing communications... Now you'll notice we hit, we're a little bit hot there, and we can see that that's indicated by that spike right there in the waveform. I haven't done the final mix on this, so... By the way, there's a very cool thing, if I can remember it. Let's just set this bigger. Very cool thing with the audio. If you grab this, Command Plus, hold the Shift key down, you can scroll back and forth in the timeline. Now there's a Constrain command with audio. And it's the command key. If you hold the command key down while dragging this up and down, you constrain movements so that you have to drag the mouse farther to make it change. This prevents you from making huge changes without more than you expect, for instance. Because if we do that, if there are existing... That's too low. Hold the command key down, pull it back up. That. If there are existing communications assets that are already out there from an earlier mission, we can use them because of the standardization. We're hoping, we being JPL, are hoping to have a Mars telecom order, orbiter in or, orbit around Mars around 2009 to support missions for the next decade uh, on the surface of Mars and possibly going to the outer planets. Isn't that cool? So what we did is we did a standing start. We took a look at how we could organize our clips using keywords, and then we used favorites, and then we could narrow those down to the in and the out, edit it down to the timeline, use the precision editor for trimming. By the way, the precision editor, there's, there's two reasons why you don't want to use it. First is you can't use the precision editor for anything which is in a connected storyline, only in the primary storyline. And second, the precision editor is not that good for audio. When you're editing picture, it's really useful. When you're editing audio, because of the way audio works, let's just move down here and I'll show you. Select these two clips, Control S, and roll down. If I wanted to overlap the audio, I'd have to drag the clip and then I can start to adjust those fade handles and it, the way that audio edits is entirely different than the way video edits and the precision editor is not particularly useful in that regard. So when I'm cutting picture, I use the precision editor a lot because it's just really fast. Apple did a great job with that. But when I'm doing audio, I'm down working with it on a manual basis and adding those fades and changing the shape of the fade to make sure it sounds exactly the way that I want. As editors, our goal is to tell a story. But the editing process involves a lot of repetition. Spending time learning techniques that make us more efficient pays dividends in decreasing wasted time and stress, which allows us more time to focus on the story. 
Can favorites overlap? N yes and no. Favorites can absolutely overlap, but they show up as a single favorite. You don't have the ability to say this is favorite one and this is favorite two. You would see the entire block. That's what happened in that this one clip here. He starts talking. But there's more. Um, in another role that I have at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we've been working for the last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. Okay with the internet that no one ever really seriously thought we could do. But there's more. Um, People a lot of times have that parenthetical comment. So I would maybe put a, a favorite that goes from here to here, and then maybe I want to do another favorite that goes here to there. It's all going to come in as a single green bar. So if they overlap, it acts as a single favorite. So you, you still have to use your own common sense and set the ins and outs the way you want. This is simply helping you to narrow the choice from the entire clip to keywords, from keywords to favorites, and from favorites to the timeline. Can the human eye detect a single frame? Yes, absolutely. No question. What's the best way to normalize levels for music tracks with wide variations between low and high? First, you don't want to, well, Normalize, what normalization does is, is it changes the level of the entire clip by the same amount such that the loudest portion does not exceed the level that you specify. With music, they want that, that acoustical contrast, sonic contrast, between the loud and the soft passages. So what you do is you just, that's easy, you just grab the rubber band and drag it up or drag it down. But what most times happens is, and you would not necessarily normalize music because of the way that music is recorded, dragging the rubber band is going to be fine. Where you want to normalize is where you've got a speaker. And if the speaker is talking at a constant level, normalization works. Where normalization breaks down is if they have a, a cough or a sneeze or they clap their hand or there's a mic rustle or the, the necklace hits the lavalier. Normalization is going to normalize to that really loud pop click or, or crash, and all of your voice frequencies are going to fall apart. There you want to use an a audio filter called the limiter filter, because what that does is it takes the soft passages of the voice and makes it louder without changing the loud passages of the voice. Works great, but you would never use it for music because it takes all the dynamic range away. So for music, I'd use the rubber band. For speakers, especially amateur speakers, I'd use the limiter filter. Assuming that you know the media equally, I can edit as fast in Final Cut 10 as I can edit in Final Cut 7. Uh, in, Final, in fact, one of the problems I've got with Final Cut 10, sorry, one of the problems I've got with Final Cut 7 is the big function keys of insert and overwrite edits are F9 and F10, and those keys are really small on an Apple keyboard. The, the Q, W, and E keys are right next to each other. So I've got my right hand on the mouse, my left hand on Q, W, E, set an in, set an out, type the letter E, it's edited the timeline. In terms of speed, I'm as fast or faster in, in Final Cut 10 as I am in Final Cut 7. The challenge is, is not uh, editing speed, it's finding the right shot and finding the in and the out. And that is as hard in Final Cut 10 as it is in Final Cut 7. Robert, if I make a mistake in EDIUS, I have an undo key that lets me step back where I went wrong. Uh, Apple has always had an undo key. It's Command Z, and in Final Cut 7, you can buy it the way the default setting in Final Cut 7. It's 10 levels of undo. It can be a maximum of 99. And in Final Cut 10, it's an unlimited number of undos up until the point that you first started the application. So if I'm working in it for half an hour, I've got everything that I've done for that last half hour is available to me as an undo. It's Command Z. It's been there since Final Cut 10 shipped. David, in virtually every project I use two audio filters, an EQ filter to bump the lows and highs, and either compressor or limiter. Is there a method to make a shortcut to add those filters with one command? The answer is no. It would be nice if it did, but it isn't. Right now, as of the 10.5 the release, there's no um, Apple scripting available to us. Hello, Jerry. Would I normally add room tone to the audio gap I created? Yes, I absolutely would and I would blend it in with a slight fade up and fade out, uh, especially if the, if the gap is like a frame or two and I'm in a real hurry, which seems to be most of my editing, probably not. But if it's going to be, and if it's going to the web,
Equally probably not. If it's going to be broadcast television or it's going to be theatrical where they're listening in a decent environment and they've got it going to generally good speakers, absolutely, because you'd hear the hole in the audio instantly. Uh, a lot of my work is done for the web and it's playing on computer speakers and I cheat. But the goal is to get the job done. Michael, audio follow-up. In my interview with Mr. Surf, I had consistent audio from him. If you were going to put an EQ or limiter, wouldn't it be better to apply those effects before dividing the clip into smaller pieces? The problem is that we can't apply filters to clips in the effects browser. We can only apply effects once they're built into a multicam clip or once they're edited to the timeline. So if you're doing multicam work, absolutely you can do it before you do your cuts. But if you're doing it on a clip-by-clip -clip basis, you've got to edit the clip down to the timeline before uh, you can apply a filter to it. What about the use of opacity on the B-roll to make the dissolve? T totally doable. So I'm going to grab this clip, edit it down to the timeline, and I'm going to grab this clip just because it's a different color, edit that down as a connected clip. Shift-Z so we can see the difference between it. I'll just ripple that. Okay, go up to the inspector and go down to opacity. Put the playhead where you want the fade in to occur, see the opacity setting, click this diamond. That diamond sets an opacity keyframe and I'm going to set that keyframe to zero. That means it's totally transparent. F put the playhead where you want the, trans the dissolved end, I'm just picking an arbitrary point, could be anywhere, set another opacity keyframe and set this to 100%. And now when I fade this, it does the transition for me. If I select this clip and go up to Clip and say Show Video Animation, we're able to adjust these keyframes in the timeline itself. Show Video Animation, Control V. See this box right here. When you click the box, it expands, and I'm able to set my opacity keyframes directly in the timeline. Grab the keyframe and drag it back and forth, and I'm able to change the timing of the keyframe. However, I don't have Bezier controls over this, so I can't right mouse click on it as a, add a Bezier control to do like an ease in, ease out. If you want to change the speed and say have it ramp up quicker, I hold the option key down. Option clicking allows me to say ramp this in, create my own ease in, ease out. So it fades up quickly and then sort of lingers and goes away. We could do that as well. The reason the, the sun faded is I ran out of clip down here before I ran out of keyframes. Let's try that again. So yes, you absolutely can. It's, you've got much more control because you're able to set an unlimited number of keyframes and, and change the shape of the curve so it's not linear. You've got more of a hanging look to it. Totally, totally doable, but it takes more time. So it's not bad. It works great. Just a question of where you want to spend your time. There are some effects where this makes perfect sense. If all I need is a simple dissolve, this is way too much work. Sometimes it's so easy to get caught up in technology that we forget that the reason we've got Final Cut is that we want to tell stories. And what I want to do today is to show how to tell a story from beginning to end, starting with the clips that were sitting in the event and bringing it down and putting it into a polished piece in the timeline. Now, one of the things I've learned is that there's never a time when my interview is done. I can always tweak it. The goal is to get it done as quickly as possible so you have as much time as you need to tweak it to your own satisfaction. And that's been the purpose of today's webinar. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching this Power Up webinar.